Hello and welcome back. Likely you watched the first video or hopefully you watched the first video. If not, let me show you that video here. Uh, this is the video checking Velma. It's a Velma V1 video. And so if you have not watched this, then you definitely want to watch this to make sure that you have Java and that uh, so that way Velma will work correctly for you or launch and be able to initialize a model and be able to do some interesting work. And so for this video, we're going to do that. So I have here a little training setup that is a pre-built uh, calibrated watershed setup for H.J. Andrews Watershed 1. And what that means is that all the spatial inputs have already been generated. The precept data has been generated uh, for the timing uh, aspect of Velma and that the full setup um, parameters are all in place with the exception of just a couple that are will be specific to your computer where you'll be running it and we'll walk through how to fix those. And so I just wanna bring that up up front because a fair amount of work has already been put into this uh, or any Velma setup. And so here, what you should have is either these data specifically or a very similar setup that's already been pre-built for you. And so here in this XML folder, this, uh, this file here holds all of the parameters for running Velma and also has all the file paths to the locations needed when the model is initialized. So we're gonna be using this uh, OR WS1 30 meter test XML. At least in this video series, you should have a very similar one if you're running a different watershed. And then two other things here, other than some documentation, is data inputs folder. This stores all the uh, maps that will be used uh, for loading and initializing the model. So like here under DIM, we have uh, our flat processed terrain. Velma does not model such things, uh, at least currently, as reservoirs and ponds and whatnot. Uh, and so what the watershed representation regarding the train, what it needs to be is water from any pixel, Velma is a grid-based model, any pixel's location when rainfall occurs and then it saturates down into the soil matrix that somehow the water can move out of the system. And so if you've heard of the JPDIM tool, that is a tool that pre-processes the elevation data and then the results from that tool are then provided to Velma. So that's what this is here. Uh, 30 meter watershed one uh, flat alt, which means it's been flat processed by the alternate uh, flat processing algorithm in JPDM. Uh, and then some other things in here, like we have some weather data provided as CSVs. So Velma does not, um, does not, it's not a model that has built in weather modeling capability. It just accepts the data that has been provided regarding daily average air temp in Celsius and uh, the total precip in millimeters, precipitation in millimeters. Uh, and then some other things uh, like uh, representation of coverage. So in this one, it's all ones, meaning that the whole watershed is being simulated as being all conifer. And for these watersheds in H.A. Andrews, that's for the most part true. So it works quite well. But you might have other watersheds that have some agricultural land or alder, whatnot, some other land cover types. So you, other system setups we have, we have a more diverse um, coverage types, but for this, for learning sake, this is just a simple coverage. Uh, because it's a simple coverage, um, there is biomass data here, but in this simulation setup, these data are not leveraged. Uh, and there is also an age map, but again, not leveraged. And But there are um, added features that uh, are more advanced Velma setups. And soils are the same way. It's just a uniform map. Um, this happens to all be the value three, but soils across the whole system is the same. And we also have some observed data um, for checking how well the model runs against observed flow. Uh, for this setup we'll be running here, it's this 1980 through 89 uh, record. 
And then there's a few other optional things that are included in here, but none of them are being used in uh, this Velma setup. These are more advanced um, aspects of the model. So to run Velma, you should have a JVelma jar. Might be this one specifically. That's the December of 2019. But if not, whatever Velma jar you have, your JVelma jar, uh, to run it, again, if you have Java installed, if not, go check the prior video about that. But otherwise, you could just double click on this or right click and say open to run it. And then you should get this. So if you have Java working and you have a Velma jar, then this will be what you end up with as your Velma model. But of course, this is just the model itself. It doesn't have the parameters for the specific watershed we want to run. So that's what that XML file is for. So I'm going to put these sort of side by side like this, or actually, I guess one over the other. And in the <clears throat> folder here, under the inside the folder uh, XML, then we can load this XML parameter set uh, two ways. You could either navigate to this location by doing file load configuration from Velma XML file, or if you have the window open where it is, you can drag and drop. If you drag and drop, you just have to put it into the gray space. It doesn't work putting it into like the comment note space, but dragging it into the gray space of the GUI then it loads the parameters. And this setup at this point, I could just hit run. Uh, again, pre-built, all the various parameters have been put into place to make this run well. And is leveraging uh, calibrated coverage for conifer trees with an appropriate uh, soil representation for watershed one. And it has um, some pretty good climate data and excellent observed flow. So everything here is a typical Velma setup all in place. When you receive this though, it's not gonna be quite to this point because you, um, your Velma setup will not know where the inputs data are or where it, you would like your output results to be put. And so that to do that, you before you hit start, you need to go to edit, set input result locations. My setup I know works, well, one, I ran it, but two, columns, it says 66, rows 46, cell size 30. These are all filled in. Yours are likely not at this point. And I'm going to demonstrate that real quick by deliberately breaking this. I'm going to just put an underbar right here and say set. But that folder location does not actually exist with the underbar. So now columns, rows, and cell size have all been grayed out. No values in there. And that's how it will likely look when you first receive any Velma setup. So to get it working on your computer, what we need to do is set the correct uh, input location for the data and output for where you want it. So again, we'll go to set input result locations. I'm going to browse to where it is because I actually have two copies of this on my computer. So I'm going to go to let's see users. Sorry, one sec here. There we go. So for me, it is on my machine here under simulations, training. Come on, go inside training. There we go. Watershed 130 meter and then select the data inputs. Or, I think that's too far. We do not want to select data inputs. We just want to be where the data inputs are located. And then a nice little trick to get to the same place is if you copy where you were at and paste it right here, then when you hit browse, it will honor this file path and I can just go back one level uh, and go inside, or actually go up a level, go inside, and then select results for where I want my outputs to be. And if I hit set, 
Now it has then corrected my columns being 66, rows being 46, cell size 30, which is a good sign up front that the model is then able to access the data. At this point, you may want, you'll likely want to change the simulation name. So I'm going to, this is called test. I'm just going to tag on today's date for me, uh, 28th of October, 2021. And then if you do file save, it will then save this setup with the name that was just input. So I'll go ahead and hit save file. If you've already saved it with that name, it'll ask you if you want to override it, which then you'll likely say yes. So at this point I can hit start. And if my input outputs are set correctly, then the model will initialize by loading in all of the spatial data, the weather data, and then start simulating Watershed 1. When you're in this view, there is a whole bunch of different views for the model. The default front view here is looking at runoff and precip, stuff about the plant carbon, et cetera, soil carbon, and various things like dissolved organic nitrogen, NH4, NO3, DIN, et cetera. Uh, really interesting to look at is the soil saturation among the various layers. Velma has four soil layers and a surface layer. So we're looking at water and soil layer one, two, three, and four. A uh, typical profile, especially in the cascade systems, is that very dynamic uh, saturation going on in the layers one and two, especially contrasting winter into the summer. But layers three, typically pretty saturated and lower levels layer four, you know, we're talking anywhere of two to four meters below the surface are um, typically pretty high saturation rate nearly all the time. Uh, and so go ahead and explore around. There's a whole bunch of different settings in here that we'll look at in a little bit of detail in following videos. Thanks.